I know why you're watching this video. You're probably working on a research paper or an assignment. And now you've come to the part where you have to write your literature review. And you're wondering, what is a literature review? How do I go about writing one? How many papers will I have to read? Is there an AI tool that can help make my job easier? Well, for all these things, you should definitely check this video. Hi everyone, I am Neha Agrawal. I'm the founder of Wise Up Communications. And in this video, we are going to talk all about writing a literature review. I'm also going to share with you a very special AI tool that is going to make your literature search super easy. So without further delay, let's get started. First, let's understand what is a literature review. So if we break this down, literature here means the writing or the work of others. And review means analysis. So in simple terms, literature review means the analysis of the writing or work that has been carried out by others. Now this literature review can be a part of a bigger document, for example, a research paper, or it can be an independent document itself. For example, a college assignment to write a literature review on a particular topic. Now, if it's part of a research paper, then this section appears usually after the introduction section and before the research methodology section. So now, how do we go about writing a literature review? So a literature review can actually be split into three distinct sections, which is the introduction, the body and the conclusion. As part of the introduction section, you would first introduce the topic as to why is even that topic worth reviewing. If your literature review is part of a bigger research paper, then in that case, you can also share the research gap or the problem statement of your work. Then you will go on to define some of the key terms or share certain important concepts that will be highlighted in your review. Once you've done that, you can give an overview of the topics that will be covered in your review or basically what information are you going to share in your review? You can just give an overview of that. Then you can share how your review has been organized or basically what are the different categories of topics that you will be reviewing or how is the information being categorized into different topics? Then you can share the scope of your literature review. So basically, what are the class of research papers that you are going to review or not review? What is the reason behind that? So what you will do is you will set the boundary of your literature review and all of these things together form the introduction section of your literature review. Next comes the body of your literature review and this is the most important section of your review because this is where you're going to share the work that has been carried out by others. But before we get into that, I'm going to share with you this amazing AI tool that is going to make your literature search super easy and that is our discovery. Our discovery acts like your companion in this literature search process. It provides you with personalized recommendations from your area of research so that you don't miss out on important articles and that too in social media style so that it is easy for you to consume. In fact, based on your search, it also shows you similar papers ensuring that you are able to do a thorough literature survey. Once you open a research paper to enhance your reading experience, it provides you with summaries, audio reading of titles and abstracts and also converts or translates the text into your own language. Now to organize all your research papers, it allows you to segregate them in different categories by bookmarking them into different reading lists. You can also share your literature survey very easily with other people. In fact, even on social media like LinkedIn and Twitter. And most importantly, it allows you to export your literature to a reference management software like Zotero or Mendeley, making your research paper writing such a breeze. So overall, I think this is such a fantastic tool for all your literature survey needs. Now, if you think it won't show as many search results, don't worry because our discovery has a huge database of articles, including 115 million plus research papers, 40 million plus open access articles, 32,000 plus journals and tie ups with some of the biggest publishing houses to ensure that you get the best content at your fingertips. 
In fact, the best part I like about this is that our discovery is easily accessible through the web or the app on your phone. So you should definitely check it out. I've put the link in the description for you. Now, before you start writing, it's important to think about how are you going to organize this section. First is chronological order. And this is the simplest approach because here you share how the development of the topic has taken place over time. This also gives a very good understanding to your audience as to how that field has evolved over time and what is the current stage of research in that field. But one thing that you need to note here is don't just list down all the literature one by one, but instead focus on the turning points, the patterns that have actually shaped the direction of that field. And this is going to add more value to your literature review. The second approach that I've seen being most commonly used is methodological. A lot of the times you might be writing a review on a topic where different sources have used different methodologies. So in that case, you can also review the results and conclusion of the methodologies that are followed by the different sources. For example, qualitative versus quantitative or theoretical versus experimental and then give your comparative analysis about it. The other two approaches are thematic and theoretical. You can use the thematic approach when your research topic has different themes to it. For example, if I'm writing a review on solar cells, then different themes could be materials used to make solar cells or applications of solar cells. And finally, the last one is theoretical. So say, for example, your research has different theoretical frameworks or models involved in it, then you can do a contrast and comparison of these various frameworks, various models, or you can also summarize all this information and share that in your study. Now that you know how to organize the body of your literature review, the next thing is to understand how to write this body. Now, one very important thing you need to remember here is that simply stating what other people have done and just citing the literature is not enough. You need to share the analysis of what other people have done and you need to share your own point of view. So instead of simply paraphrasing the literature, this is what you should be doing. First, summarize and synthesize. Try to group similar literature together and then share the main points of each source. Second, Analyze and interpret. Try to share your interpretation wherever possible and then also discuss the significance of the findings of these different research papers when it comes to your own topic of literature review. And finally, critically evaluate. Share the strengths and weaknesses of the different sources of the different research papers to give a complete evaluation in your literature review. In fact, in this way, you will be able to analyze the work of others and go to a deeper level of understanding about their research rather than simply stating their findings. Now, this is something that differentiates a good literature review from a not so good one. Now, the final section is the conclusion. If your literature review is an independent study, then very similar to a research paper, you will first reiterate what was the purpose of taking up this review and what were some of the important research questions that you were trying to answer. Then you should share what were the findings that you came across after doing an extensive literature survey like this. Then you should draw conclusions from your study. For example, how can this research field be taken forward or what are the various applications that can be explored in this field? Of course, this will vary from topic to topic, but the idea here is to share the conclusions or significance of your research study and what does it mean for your audience. But if your literature review is part of a research paper, then the important thing to share is that after an extensive literature survey, what is the plan of action that you have arrived at, which will help in overcoming that research gap or the problem statement, which forms the objective of your study. And then you can close this section by sharing the significance of the study and how do you plan to make an impact. And now to answer the most common question that all of you ask me is, how many papers should I read for my literature review? Well, the answer is it varies. For example, if you are writing a literature review for a college assignment, sometimes the university will ask you to only review three to four papers. If you're writing a literature review for a research article, 
sometimes you might need to cite at least 30 to 40 papers or if your literature review is actually part of a review paper that you're writing then sometimes the number goes up to 70 to 100 papers or even more but this number is very subjective because it varies from topic to topic and the kind of literature review that you're working on. Now, to make this entire process easy for you, I have actually listed down a lot of AI tools in my past two videos, which you can check out. And of course, along with that, don't forget to use our discovery. And now, thank you so much for watching this video and I wish you have a fantastic career ahead.